Welcome everyone to this short introduction to the software Tellurium that we will be using in that class. Tellurium is a Python-based modeling environment for systems biology and other applications. And it has a big advantage. It comes with a graphical user interface based on a notebook so that you can type in there your code and also a documentation in the same document. Some of you might have heard about Jupyter Notebook. That is a web application that runs directly in your browser, which you can install on your local machine. And then you can run Python applications and other code in that. And you have different cell types there where you can execute different things in it. So Jupyter Notebook is very handy. And the good thing is Tellurium runs in Jupyter Notebook if you want to use it that way. So after installing Jupyter Notebook on your machine, you will be able to access that website on your local machine that is shown here. It's um, that HTTP address, which is your local host. After you execute one command in the command line, Jupyter Notebook to, to launch it. So once you have done that, your browser will open a new window and then you can execute code in there. You can see that is kind of a notebook format where you have different cell types and here's a python cell for instance that prints the string hello world right when you execute it so as said there are different cell types and they are shown in that table to the bottom right of this slide here that you can see so the standard cell is a code cell which allows you to do some programming in there and then there are markdown cells. Markdown is a very simplified uh, language that allows you to make structured text that is both human and machine readable. And that's also very handy. And that markdown here also understands uh, some commands of LaTeX so that you can also type formulas. And that will be very convenient for solving homework assignments in that class because you can directly give answers to more complex questions in there. Then of course there's also a raw cell type that would be a cell type that is not interpreted and here is uh, just for completeness there's also a heading cell mentioned that we won't use and that is also obsolete. But here this little animation shows you already how you can create a new notebook in your browser using Python 3 and then you can uh, change the name and save it to your computer and then once you have done that, then you can type something in that cell and execute the code. And to the bottom left on that slide, you can see there are some very handy commands that you might want to use. And that would be pushing shift and the return button or enter key. And that will execute a cell and move to the next cell so that you can run a cell and then directly go to the next and execute the next or you can hit the control button and the command of uh, the enter key and that will execute the current cell and make the cursor stay in that current cell. But now let's come to Tellurium. So Tellurium is actually an element. You can find it in the table, the periodic table. And interestingly, it's uh, located directly next to another element that we will be talking about and that is antimony. So Tellurium is here the name of a software that we will be using, but you can find it in that periodic table. So if you install Tellurium on your local machine, you will be able to also install its graphical user interface. And that is an own notebook interface that brings cells very similar to Jupyter Notebook with it. So just go to GitHub and download it and follow the instructions and then you will be able to install Tellurium. So note, Tellurium is both. It is such a separate environment with its own notebook, but also a software library based in Python that you can run from Jupyter Notebooks if you prefer to run your cells in the browser. You can find a lot of different pages about documentation if you get stuck 
so that uh, you could uh, find help easily. Also, Tellurium comes with help pages that are built in. So that screenshot to the right is already a help page that is by itself a notebook document. So now let's see some more insights of Tellurium. So Tellurium is, as I said, an integrated platform that is based on Python and um, is available for all operating systems or all major operating systems, including Mac, Windows and Linux. And it already ships with it some very powerful libraries, some of which we will be using. Lib Roadrunner is a high performance simulation engine for executing systems biology models that are encoded in the systems biology markup language. And Antimony is another interesting library because that brings with it parsers and an own scripting language in which we can write systems biology models in a very easy format, very simplified, much easier to write and read compared to the systems biology markup language itself, which is an XML based format and therefore much more cumbersome to type by humans or actually not intended to be typed by humans at all. So Antimony is really a scripting language that allows you to write systems biology models in a very compact way. And so Antimony is a language by itself and it's also um, a library that parses that language and gives you access to its features. So also um, there are some plotting libraries embedded in Tellurium which are used to plot the results when you make when you run a model and make a simulation. So now let's look at one example. Here is now a very simple reaction system in which substance S1 um, reacts to S2 and S2 reacts then to S3. So here is a differential equation system, an ordinary differential equation system that represents exactly that reaction system. Don't worry about the details how that is now derived because we will talk about that in the lecture. Just for now, um, please take it for granted or just accept that that would be an appropriate representation of that reaction system. And now you can run or encode that as a model in Tellurium using the code that is now popping up. So if you do it in Jupyter Notebook, you would have to work with strings because Jupyter Notebook in the browser only knows Python cells, um, whereas that standalone Tellurium has a specific cell for model types, as we will see. But in Jupyter Notebook, you would first import Tellurium as a library and then read in a model that is specified here as that string um, in red, where you just say what reacts, so S1 reacts to S2, S2 reacts to S3, and then separately with, uh, separated with semicolons, you would state how fast that reaction is. Then below in that uh, line, you just say um, what the initial conditions are for that system. So you specify what are the initial values for these substances and also what are these kinetic parameters. Again, these are things that we will talk about in the lecture in more detail. Just for now, that's how you specify a model. And then you can run that model. So with the command TE for Tellurium, yeah, um, dot load A, load antimony, you parse that antimony string, and then you get an object back that is an here called R, that um, variable R, and then in this line below you can just say R dot simulate, and then you only have to specify start and end and the number of steps that should be used for simulation, and it gives you a result that you can then plot with the next command. So R dot plot result, and that will give you something like this. And you already see 
how powerful that is because you don't have to worry about how to convert a reaction system into a ordinary differential equation system because that's automatically done by tellurium here and then you can simulate and you don't have to worry about how that actually works but there are different simulation engines built in or different um, algorithms at least that we can select if you want so i think i mentioned everything that is shown here below so i can just move on to the next slide so roadrunner is really the simulator that we have underneath under the hood and then there are different commands that we can use to read in systems biology models so the example before showed you how to read a model from an antimony string and now there are different commands so you can also directly read an sbml file by using the command load sbml um, and then there's another command load cellml cellml is also a very frequently used format in systems biology but which we won't cover in that lecture here and it's a bit different to sbml has a bit different approaches behind it a different representation of uh, the um, elements or the um, compounds that we have in there but in principle it is um, similarly powerful as sbml so mainly we will use antimony and uh, antimony can actually interconvert between SPML and CellML and it's a scri scripting language that is much easier to type and so we will mainly focus on using antimony here. So here's another example now. So import tellurium as TE. So that is again what you would type in your browser window in your Python cell. But by the way you can also if you like to use Tellurium as a standalone, you can also type that directly in a Python cell in Tellurium as such, thereby keeping compatibility with the Jupyter Notebook in the browser because you can also save a Tellurium Notebook file in the very same format that Jupyter Notebook can load in the browser. And if you do so and only stick to Python cells and not use specific model cells, then you can easily open your program in either application, Jupyter Notebook or in Tellurium. So now that example now creates another model in which we have a name defined for that model, or actually it's an identifier, it's an ID. We will see there are differences between identifier and name. So here the model is called test, that's the ID. And then we define a compartment with the identifier C1 and we set C1, the volume, to 1.0, whatever that is in units. So we will talk about units later on. So for now that has just a, a value 1.0. And then we define a species. And here the term species might be confusing uh, first. Um, because often people think about organisms, but species can also be chemical species. And here we mainly think about molecules when we talk about species. So we have now a species S1 and S2, and we define their initial values. So S1 is a 10, S2 is a 0. And again, here we leave out the units for now. And then we say where these are located. So S1 is in compartment S uh, C1, and S2 is in the very same compartment. And then we define a reaction and we give that reaction also an identifier. And in this case, the identifier of the reaction is J1. So J1 is a reaction in which S1 is being consumed and produces S2. And here I should mention that that uh, simple arrow, that uh, dash greater than or minus greater than, is to be understood as a reversible arrow. If you want to have an irreversible reaction, you have to have an equal sign followed by a greater than. And after the semicolon, you have then the rate law that is the speed of that reaction. And it's here defined with K1 times S1. And K1 is here in this case a constant. 
um, or at least it's um, here specified to be 1.0. As we will see later, there is also a keyword const to make clear that a value doesn't change in contrast to species or compartment. You can say you could have a, a qualifier here, const, um, followed by a1, and then that would make more clear that that is a constant in that model. So now we load that model with r.te um, r equals te dot load a and give the model as a parameter. Now, so when we um, call the simulate function, then that Roadrunner instance uses a solver and interprets that model and uh, gives back the result to us. And here we have some options how we can actually continue with that. So there are selections. Selections reduce what we see in the output or sometimes they actually add also something. So here, um, basically the returned value from a simulation experiment is a table and one column or the first column usually is at the time column followed by the columns for the chemical species in the system. But sometimes you want to see how the fluxes or the um, reactions change in their velocity over time and then you want to have uh, columns for them as well and to access those you should use uh, selections and then you can also use uh, steps and these uh, step parameters will give you the ability to also say precisely if you want to hit a specific time point for instance you really want to hit 3.534 then you have to specify that via the steps command and um, note that that is exclusive with the points that you usually say, like how many points in that simulation do I want to have. So here's now uh, the command again. So r.simulate from 0 to 50 with 100 points gives us an, a uniformly distributed uh, result at these 100 points between 0 and 50. And then we say r.plot and that gives us the result. So here now in contrast you have the option to specify the same thing in Tellurium's standalone version and there you have an antimony cell that is now shown here and um, in that antimony cell you can directly specify what the model is and how it looks like. So here the model test is being defined the very same model but here you see you have syntax highlighting and uh, different that gives you different colors so that you can better see what the variables are and then there is a python cell which you can recognize with that uh, little python icon and here you can also execute uh, the model and here is one command mentioned that i recommend to you to always use and that would be te.set default plot engine to mat plot lab lib because as you will see there are sometimes problems with the uh, with the default plotting engine so i would just always import tellurium as a library and then change the plotting library uh, that is used but um, note that even if you use tellurium as a standalone program you need to import it as a library inside because um, the standalone version of Tellurium also doesn't automatically import the Tellurium library. So if you want to access methods or um, functions in the Tellurium library, you have to also import it when using the um, notebook environment that is coming directly from Tellurium. So now um, here is one slide about how you can change the settings of uh, the integrator. So um, you have different options. You can uh, say r dot set integrator and then give a name of the integrator or you can directly assign it as a property. Um, here we assume that r is the roadrunner object that you have uh, obtained from Tellurium as shown in the previous slides. So here are some possible values that you can use. 
CVODE is a very powerful simulation engine for ordinary differential equations. Gillespie is mainly used is actually used for stochastic simulation and then there is RK4 which is the Rangi Kutta solver fourth order uh, named after the German mathematicians Runge and Kutta who, de who developed that method a uh, long time ago I think 100 years ago or so or more it's still very popular and it's a very good algorithm but um, changing that is only recommended if you know what you're doing because CVODE is already a very fast solver. Of course, if you want to do stochastic simulation, you should go to Gillespie. So in that lecture here, we won't cover stochastic simulation. We will stick with ordinary differential equations. So CVODE is uh, very good because it has already adaptive step size um, and also um, has different error tolerances that it can use and that's very handy. So you can change properties of that integrator also by uh, calling r.integrator.sum property or you can use a set method and then you have to specify key and value. So there are some settings that you can use for CVODE. For instance, you can change the variable step size from um, true to false, um, stiffness, um, you can change that property. Um, you can change the error tolerance, the absolute one or the relative one. So stiff, by the way, means that you have large changes in one some uh, variables and very low changes in others so that there are many orders of magnitude in difference and then the solver would have to simultaneously make very large and very small steps and that's going to become problematic and then uh, some solvers aren't able um, to reduce the error tolerance more and more and then mainly can solve the system so um, the CVODE is already able to solve stiff problems that's why it's very very handy so if you do stochastic simulation you might want to fix the seed in case that you want to ensure reproducibility of the results. For instance, if you do debugging, you may want to use the same seed. Um, otherwise, uh, it's really going to be a different each time the outcome and then it might be harder to debug. But of course, normally for random uh, simulation, you want that behavior, so different results each time. Um, it just depends on what you're doing, right? Which mode you are. So here's now an example of how you can change the parameter settings. And that's now shown in a box um, that gives you the impression that you're doing that directly in a Tellurium cell. So print out what the current configuration of the integrator is. And that could give you an output like that here shown with all these different properties that that integrator has, in my case here, CVODE. And then remember we had that very simple example, three um, chemical species, two reactions, and a three-dimensional ordinary differential equation system uh, given like that here. And now we would um, want to print out some properties of our integrator and also change some properties. And here's just some example code how we can do that. So r.integrator.variable step size equals true or r.integrator.absolute tolerance equals um, 10 to the minus 3 and so forth. So then here is a command that I recommend to you to memorize. That is the reset, because after you run a simulation of a model, the um, internal state of Tellurium is being changed, or the Roadrunner to be more precise. And you might want to go back and run a simulation again. So if you 
say r.reset, then you will go to the original state of the model and be able to run another simulation with the original configuration. So now you can simulate that system as you see here by typing that command and then you can type r.plot and that will give you that plot window that you can see here to the right. And now there's something interesting. Here is now an example for a selection. So that example gives you just one column, the first column, and that is the time column of the simulation result. And uh, here is given with the headline time values. So remember the result of a simulation is nothing but a table in principle, and then you can select from that table here, in this case, the first column. So, and uh, by the way, this also explains that the smooth curves that you see in a plot are actually interpolations between these different time points. So the time points are kind of discrete time points and then um, the smoothness of the curve is being shown uh, to make it more easy to, to recognize but that's uh, going to be an interpolation. So now roadrunner.simulate um, is the method that runs a simulation and then here you see the different arguments that you can use for that simulation. So there's start, end and then either points or steps and these are exclusive. So as I said the default would be points so you just say how many points do I want to have between start and end and um, the other option would be to define specific steps at which you want to hit with a simulation. So you can um, use them as shown here. You can either use the position as we did so far, that's shown to the bottom of that slide on the left hand side. So r.simulate 0, 10, 6. Or here yeah, um, on top, you can see there are qualifiers here um, to make explicit what you're meaning. Start equals 0, end equals 10 points equals six. And in the same way, you can define the steps if you want. And that gives you these timetables that you can see to the right. In both cases, they are um, I identical because uh, it's just the same that we here specified in different ways. So um, there are also options to the simulation. So you can use selections to filter out what you want to show. So for instance here, there's a way to print out what are the floating species in the model. And then you can use those as a selection only, get the species values without the time column. Or below there's an example where you can show how the rate or the velocity of the reaction actually changes. So we call that a flux column. You can see the flux through a reaction is also not constant. And if you want to plot how fast reactions are over time, then you can use a selection like that. Print r.simulate again 10 or 0, 10, 6, and then the selection from uh, with time and j1. And j1 would be our reaction flux. So note if you don't specify any IDs. I think internally Tellurium usually uses J and some index um, to indicate the fluxes. So again here there are some keystrokes that you want to memorize. Shift and the return key and control and the return key and a cell. So one is to execute a cell and move to the next cell. The next one is to execute a cell and stay with the cursor in the same cell. So now we talked about reset and that is very useful. So um, because the simulator changes its state in 
after a simulation and so you might want to be able to run a simulation again and there are different ways of you, how you can reset so you can reset the system uh, in total or just uh, so may, maybe may, mainly go back to the initial state or you can also reset uh, just um, resetting the parameters and then run another simulation and here you can see the difference that it makes and it's using a print format a formatted printing in python where you uh, have different variables that are then placed at different positions in that sp string here and um, the output is shown to the right on this slide so and it's using a few um, for loops to navigate through these lists of species identifiers here in that system. A few words about models and model building. So there are also online databases for systems biology models. One very frequently used online database is Biomodels database and you can access models in that database also directly from Tellurium and uh, to this end you can uh, use a specific load function that is shown here just memorize or um, copy paste that prefix here https and so forth and then you have the model identifier in this case here biomod followed by many zeros and then number 10 and so um, basically you have that prefix and the model identifier and then you have to pass that as a an argument to that load SPML model function and then it imports that model directly from bio models and then you can run a simulation on it and plot the result if you want so here is a bit more complicated many reacting species that you see here and they have a more complex behavior in that example of course you are not strictly bound to using um, unity as stoichiometric coefficients here is an example for a reaction system where in the um, second reaction here you have three s3 forming four s4s and six s5s the first reaction also forms two molecules of S3 and then you see also reflected that in the rate law uh, it's using exponents here now we will talk about that in the lecture and um, you can do that so then as uh, if you um, use unit unity stoichiometric coefficients then you don't have to specify them explicitly of course you can also write them into the reaction but uh, they're usually left out and um, you can now write that shorthand notation into proper antimony and as you can see I think what is being produced to the right is a more um, more comprehensive representation of that very same model so you can always write very brief and then let antimony write a bit more text and as you see it now gives identifiers to the reaction underscore j1 and underscore j0 and it also adds the um, keywords species um, and const to the chemical species and to the constants in the model here is now again that hint that Tellurium uses the symbol minus greater than for reversible reactions and equals greater than for irreversible reactions. And there's an example that has um, now three reactions and um, that is here specified as a string. So again, that works in both in the antimony standalone and also in the Jupyter Notebook in your web browser. Um, and then here, in a separate cell you would specify r dot simulate and plot and then you get that output here i should mention that the um, pound symbol or the 
uh, double cross um, uh, hash symbol, how, however you want to name it, is uh, can be used for comments in antimony. Uh, same also slash slash just as in many programming languages. So now here's a model um, that is a bit more uh, complex that has a feedback um, oscillations in it. And here you see a syntax that uses a dollar symbol. So the first reaction J0 um, has a sp reacting species in it dollar x0 and that means that x0 and also x1 in the last reaction J4 they are so-called boundary species that means um, it is assumed that their concentration never changes during the simulation it's kind of a constant pool that never ends so when you take something from that constant pool something is always coming to replace what you have taken out and uh, that makes it a boundary species so again we have to specify the rate laws they are now here also a bit more complex uh, formulae as you can see um, uh, kind of uh, michaelis menten type rate laws we will talk about those in the lecture in more detail and um, below you see the different um, parameters also a hill coefficient as i see here h equals uh, 10 and um, now you can run such a more complex model also and then plot it just like the other ones um, you can also do more complex operations with it um, for instance just plot some species against each other that's very Im important for us in the lecture because it allows you to make what we call a face portrait or a face plane so here you have uh, S1 versus S2 plotted, so two reacting species. So to the left you see a plot that shows reactive species versus the time. And here in the right plot, time is used as a parameter. So you see how these uh, species relate to each other and change over time. And there's a start point and an end point. And in the lecture, we will talk a lot about what that means to you and what you can learn from such a configuration. Um, but here is now an example how you can do that. So you can easily plot reacting species against each other. You can, of course, do the same thing for fluxes and other variables in the system. Yeah, and that's all I wanted to tell um, for now about Tellurium. There is a lot of information in the web so here are some useful links that you can see and um, if you have questions of course um, you can also contact me if you don't find a solution online and uh, or contact your fellow students and uh, try things out so i would just recommend to you that you take the examples from that little presentation here and then copy paste them into a tellurium notebook or into a Jupyter Notebook of your choice and then just try them out, see how they work and then um, try to understand what it's doing and how to modify it and by solving the homework problems that should give you a very good start into dynamic simulation with Tellurium. Thank you for your attention and uh, that's the end and um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.